Hello, this is Dan Farisi, Editor-in-Chief with Commercial Integrator, and welcome to AV Plus, the podcast for the commercial AV integration market. Today, we have a fascinating discussion with Ron Bertie and Dan Maloney from Matrox. Topic of conversation is the convergence of the commercial and broadcast markets as well as the trend toward open standards, and in particular, the ascendance of IPMX. Thank you so much for joining us and enjoy the conversation. As always, please like and subscribe to our YouTube page, and please subscribe to the AV Plus podcast on Apple and on Spotify. So happy to be joined this morning by Ron Birdie, Business Development Manager for Matrox Video, and Dan Maloney, Technical Marketing Manager for Matrox Video, for a conversation about a lot of different topics centered primarily on the commercial AV industry, broadcast, the various challenges and developments that we're seeing across categories. So thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate you taking time to be on the podcast. Yeah, our pleasure. Glad to be here, Dan. So let's start with the first question, which is challenges. What challenges are being faced right now by the commercial AV industry, as well as by the broadcast industry? Are they similar? Are they entirely different? Well, I'll start by saying that uh, broadcast industry is a little bit, uh, has had challenges pre-COVID and post-COVID. We ever all had challenges pre-COVID, but uh, or post-COVID, excuse me, pre-COVID, broadcast was really having a difficulty with their revenue models. Uh, ad dollars were, it's a revenue crunch really that broadcasters were feeling because the big uh, streaming companies were coming in and, and grabbing a lot of their ad dollars. Um, OTT sites were delivering content. And um, so, you know, years ago, broadcast uh, wanted to embark on a way to remodel their, their business uh, and their operations to be more streamlined. Post COVID, um, their challenges multiplied because one of the main revenue models, main, most interesting parts of their business was the live event business, primarily sports, but any live event, that's where broadcast still was king. And of course, COVID kind of put a kibosh on a lot of that, uh, where there's no live audience, there's a lot of times no sports and there's no sports, you know, again, revenue uh, and ad dollars kind of dry up. So that's, you know, and then pro AV side, they have a different set of, um, you know, of challenges, but there is an overlap. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the, 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 the you know, the live event space is, is kind of covered by both sides, right? You get some pro AV doing, of course, broadcast is doing it as well. And if there's no audience, well, there's no show. So that's a part of the business that's really been affected, certainly with, uh, with COVID. But Outside of that, you know, for, for many pro AV installations, security in the last year or two has ramped up to a major um, component of, of a feature set that's being driven by the market as a whole. And, and you can think about it from uh, different market segments themselves. So whether it's medical or, or military or government, but you know, right into the enterprise space. It's, it's a key element going, uh, going forward. And what's really, it's really bubbled to the surface. And I think it's something that uh, the pro AV side has really been challenged with um, and is addressing um, as we move forward. It's really a key element. So I, I would say that's the two top ones for me, at least the, uh, you know, the current uh, challenges that we're facing. So as you both mentioned, there is some crossover, there is some uh, you know, intersection between these, these worlds, the commercial AV world and the broadcast world. When I was formerly with Sound and Communications, a lot of times I thought of myself as someone, a journalist who covered commercial AV. I kind of thought broadcast is not really part of my, my beat, not really part of what my readers are involved with. But it seems like things are kind of changing now. Why do you think commercial AV and broadcast technology is converging? What do you think is the what forces are bringing these these areas together well um you know broadcast technology traditionally tended to evolve in a in a distinct ecosystem you had manufacturers and standards bodies um you know putting together a suite of technologies really focused on broadcast requirements um on a completely opposite spectrum you have the consumer electronic space which also did require good interoperability and standards to be able to have televisions, 
meet up with set top boxes, G computers and GPUs, drive monitors, and just networking in general, um, you know, consumer electronics really drove a lot of that in innovation. Um, however, you know, Pro AV was kind of a mix of, of, of both of these worlds. It borrowed heavily from both of those. Um, but it also relied on some proprietary technology to bring these things together. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, both broadcast and pro AV have turned to IP as the infrastructure to, you know, like that's the, I think that's what's driving the, the collision that we're both moving towards AV over IP and we've been doing it in sort of different ways. I mean, like Dan said, you know, broadcasters are trying to, you know, decrease costs. They're in a very competitive environment. The, the landscape is changing. So decreasing OPEX really makes a lot of sense for them. And then moving from, you know, baseband, STI and so on, kind of makes sense to, to drive that down, drive the OPEX down. And at the same time, they've got to compete with these new elements like streaming services and that sort of thing. You know, on the other hand, you know, I think it's true that, that, that Pro EV, you know, kind of draws from that, but also from the consumer electronics side, and, and on that side, you know, the, you see the network has become basically everything's just one wire. It doesn't matter. It's, you have a router in your house and everything's connected to that. Your, your phones, your, your PCs, your, your tablets, and all of that is all driven from, from you know, that single service, if you will. So Pro I just think is, is adopting and fostering from the consumer electronics side for the IP-based technology and then, of course, enterprise as well, and driving their AV over IP from that. But at the same time, it's really, at this point, it's primed to sort of pull from the broadcast side some of the things that, that are driving standards in broadcast, because obviously broadcast, very singular workflow or very, you know, I guess, common workflow across many uh, applications has driven those standards. And I think that uh, Pro AV is really primed to start pulling those standards to make uh, less of a Wild West approach to uh, AV over IP and more of a standards-based approach. Absolutely. And I, I think that the standards-based approach to AV, I, AV over IP is, is no doubt the direction in which we're moving. And I think absolutely pretty much everything uh, in commercial AV is becoming connected to the network at this point. So I can see IP not only becoming pervasive in our community, but also being a driving force in bringing broadcast and commercial AV together. Can we, can we just burrow a little bit deeper into the IP point? I'd like to get Dan's perspective on this as well as yours, Ron. What challenges does IP solve? What problems does it solve? Why is IP the future of the converged industry? Well, like many other industries, IP is revolutionizing how work is being accomplished. Um, you know, productivity levels and new capabilities are flourishing, you know, all the time or popping up as people, as manufacturers and software developers start to harness the potential of IP. It's, um, it's a universal transport technology. So it's a foundation that links many different operational components. So just by switching up the simple, the, the piece of software you're using, uh, you can deliver some all sorts of new services, some you know disruptive levels of automation, uh, improved uh, you know improved productivity and reduction of errors. Um, you can pursue things in broadcast. Uh, you know you pursue remote production opportunities. And you leverage leverage highly skilled workers and equipment from a, a location that's you know remote to to where the event is happening. Um, you can harness cloud based production tools that allow you to spin up and spin down, you know, processing cap cap capabilities as you need them, not um, just have them on site at all times. Um, so, you know, we can't be over, can't overstate how powerful the universe, you know, the universality of IP is. And any device can communicate with any other um, just by running this correct software. And that's where, you know, interoperability uh, is, is, is important if you have various devices and standards are what's going to make that glue so, so important, so, so, so worthwhile, so, so, uh, so powerful in the, in the AV over IP space. Yeah, I can't really add to that. I mean, frankly, it's, it's, I mean, that's what the IP side of things is what makes things so easy because of the, you know, that, that little history that we've had with it, I mean, well, little, it's, it's been around for a while, and, and, but the, the amount of growth 
that we've seen in it, whatever it might be, whether you know, starting with the land and, and now with the, the internet and, and everything that we're getting from it, it's, it's a very short amount of time and it's all due to the fact that it's based on standards. It's really evolved over time and you know, all the components that, that have been uh, built into it really enable that. So it's something that's just, it, it's a magnet to, to, uh, to both industries to, to use that as, a, as the core architecture for you know, getting what they need to get done. And you've both now mentioned standards, and there's no doubt that the zeitgeist in our industry community right now is toward open standards, is toward interoperability, the whole open garden approach, as opposed to a closed garden where you have to work with this particular standard or this particular technology, and you're essentially locked in. So I'd like you to burrow even further into kind of the benefits of open standards. As I say, there's no doubt that's where the zeitgeist is, that's where things are going. What is propelling that? Well, I think I think it's the benefits, right? Obviously, the benefits to the standard, and 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 the the core benefit is that it's it is evolutionary and it's not generational. So you know when you're building on a standard, it, it evolves over ta- time. And like I was saying, like with the with the network, right? It starts with whatever it might have been, you know, 10, uh, 10 meg network, uh, one hundred, then one G, and now it's at ten and twenty five and forty and a hundred, but you know, the point is that for the most part, well, granted 10 and 100 is not really being used, but actually 100 is still around and one gig is very prevalent and it's still part of the architecture. So it's generational. You don't, uh, sorry, it's, it's evolutionary. It's not generation. It's, you know, generation is okay. Well, you know, we've, we've used this equipment. Now it's time to get it out and replace it with something else. No, the network has been evolutionary. It, 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 it adapts, it evolves, and doesn't just, you know, get rid of the past and, and uh, start over. It really is uh, that, that benefit of evolution stays, so your investment can be reused, and you can add to it. So one other thing is interoperability. It's a major benefit, right? Like you said, Dan, you, you don't want to buy something, have to use it, and then you're stuck with it. You can't you can't um, um, use that and add to it. It just does not make a lot of sense if you don't have to. So moving towards those, those um, standards-based approaches really gives you that interoperability uh, benefit as well. And it also allows for you know, developing best of breed. You know, for instance, um, we work with Netgear and Netgear you know, has a line of, of AV over IP switches. So they've tailored, yes, it's built on IT standards and networking standards, but it's it's built for specifically the workflow of AV over IP. It'll still you know manage user data, but it's really optimized for AV over IP. So you get that that uh, best of breed kind of uh, evolution as well. And then on top of that, I also think that you know smaller companies can join the game more easily. So if the smaller companies and and startups have something that's um, you know, of, of interest and something that's you know, valuable to the industry, it's much easier for them to join the game and bring that to market and make it useful. Whereas if they're doing it with you know, proprietary solutions and adding to that, the pool that they play in is much smaller and their likelihood for success is much smaller too. So it just, right. it just you know, motivates and, and creates opportunity when you're, when you're building on, uh, on standards. Anything to add to that, Dan? Well, I mean, Ron, Ron said most of it. We, you know, in broadcast, their basic po- point of moving to a standards-based IV, you know, AV over IP, you know, was uh, essentially they were tired of, of the generational concept. Oh, I'm moving from SD to HD, HD to 4K, and I have to scrap all my equipment and then bring it back, uh, bring back a new other set. If they can have the foundational infrastructure be evolutionary they can just keep building it building on it um, without having to scrap how they work and then just as new fun new features and new uh, ways of you know new resolutions new color spaces come up but the foundation can still handle all of that uh, that's what was a big motivating factor you know for them um, and, and ultimately there was one other point that uh, that uh, really helped them is their skill sets required 
they don't have to go through a retraining of, oh, I got a new infrastructure type. I'm going to have to retrain all my people. If your infrastructure is IT based, there's a lot of IT engineers out there training them to handle video or pro AV content. If the foundation is IT becomes a much smaller learning curve and there's a lot bigger pool of, of, of talent out there to help you know, drive that, uh, those installations. So just to recap for our audience, I think some of the things we've agreed on so far is A, that the commercial AV and broadcast worlds, there is an increasing crossover and convergence. Um, B, the power of IP is almost unlimited and it's gonna suffuse our entire industry. And C, open standards are the way of, it's the zeitgeist, it's the way things are going and we've exp explained some of the benefits and some of the power of an open standards-based approach. Let's see if we can bring all of those together. Do you think that there is a need for new standards to emerge as a result of commercial AV and broadcast coming together? If so, what would those be and why are they necessary? So broadcast uh, started uh, this, this effort of probably seven or eight years ago, the effort started and really, you know, took off over the last uh, three or four years, um, really making use of IP as a, the medium to, to, uh, to transport audio, video reliably over IP. So there's been video over IP for 20 years. Uh, you've been doing web video for years, but the broadcasters had a very, a very specific, you know, group a uh, set of requirements to be able to use this you know as a replacement to SDI potentially and that was the the goal say so can we really replace SDI with a, an IP based uh, transport protocol and the suite of uh, ST2110 standards was born out of this um, NMOS was a second standard which is command and control APIs that uh, was also standardized that came out of the broadcast industry um, it was promoted and really uh, driven by a, a group of um, uh, like-minded, you know, companies, uh, manufacturers through Ames, and then Simpty finally ratified it. And out of this, Ames said, well, the pro EV space has a similar set of, of requirements and um, that the broadcast space, however, they have unique requirements. Um, so... They, the same group of uh, manufacturers took about, uh, got together and brought in new pro AV, you know, specific manufacturers and, and come up with IPMX, uh, which combines the best parts of 2110 and NMOS and are in fact fully compatible, but also brings in some um, pro AV specific requirements um, that, uh, that um, are unique because of the nature of the content being being managed and the networks on which um, they're going to going to operate. So uh, again, the whole the whole idea is to make you know, and broadcast interoperability was an absolute must. The cameras and the switchers and the monitors and uh, the servers and everything, video servers, everything in between had to share a common uh, a protocol to sh to move the videos in and out of it. Uh, and um, the Pro AV can certainly, space can certainly benefit from that as well. Uh, moving away from proprietary pro, uh, AV over IP command control uh, to a more open standards one um, that, uh, that allows best of breed and uh, at no compromise of quality or latency um, or network type. And, um, you know, that's where IPMX is, it, it comes in and that's where Ames is, uh, the Pro AV group of Ames is, is doing a great job. Anything to add, Ron, about how IPMX supports equipment interoperability? Yeah, I think, I think what we could say is that it's, I mean, it's really a well thought of, they've been working on this for several years at this point, and it's got a lot of momentum behind it, but it, it's IP based, of course, so, so it can work, you know, it's, it's supposed, the idea is that it's a wide um, application area, and that obviously with a standard, that's exactly what you want, so it, it supports one, 100 gig, it, it's, it supports, you know, standard compression schemes, and it also supports fully uncompressed quality, so it, it gives Pro AV the flexibility to drive you know, multiple applications and workflows from a single standard in that sense. So you, you can, it, it do the low latency you might need, 
it gives you full uncompression, so zero lossless quality, or you know, visually lossless with you know standard compression at one gig or even 2.5 gig, depending on what industry you're working within. It supports things like HDCP over IP, so that makes a lot of sense for Pro AV, and and it is driving security. Um, solutions as well. It's, it is focusing on that because it's seeing and it's reacting to the current market trends. So all of these features kind of lend to equipment interoperability because the idea is that everybody could take advantage of that. And then on top of it, build in their own uh, value add and their own you know, expertise into the solution so that you know, IPMX base um, solution drives all of that extra uh, refinement for you know, uh, creating solutions that, that actually, depending on the workflow you're in, are really great for all of the solutions. So um, you can have different components from different manufacturers working together and exercising their specific um, feature set for a specific workflow. And I really think that's the, you know, the, 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 the benefit from the interoperability kind of things. That way you're not spending time trying to make things work together, but you're getting to take advantage of the key features that they bring to the market and the advantages they bring from one vendor versus another. So I think uh, we've kind of explored the benefits uh, in, in a technical way, in a way that our you know, AV Plus podcast uh, listeners will definitely understand. Something we're also trying to focus on, of course, is kind of breaking this down to the point where if you're explaining to the CEO of a company the benefits of this in terms of you know, practical applications, practical, what's the experience going to be? How would you describe the benefits of open standards and IPMX in kind of a, a technology scaled down way? If you were talking to the CEO of a company, what would she or he want to hear that would say IPMX is going to deliver what? Yeah, it's it's there's a lot obviously, and and first, clearly we we've already addressed it in a general way. So the interoperability, the standard side of things, and getting to to take the best of all worlds uh, or all manufacturers and and use that for your benefit, and hopefully you know expectedly under a single platform of control. So in the you know the macro side of things, that's what you get, but then. The, the specification, the, the, the um, standard itself allows you to work on one or 2.5 gig networks, depending on what industry you're working in, so that you, you can drive your content that way. Or you can run, you know, like we said, fully uncompressed at 10 and 25 gig, but you're not pigeonholed into one or the other or any specific, you know, that we have today, any specific manufacturer where, yeah, I've only got a one gig solution or I've got a 10 gig solution that, you know, uncompressed solution, but I can't do one gig. So, you know, the idea of, of having that all under one roof is key, but then beyond that little things like this, the details are, okay, it can offer, we, you know, it supports HDR, HFR, 4K, 8K, and even beyond that. And, and this color spaces and quality that it can give you match the needs of desktop or video with 444 for desktop or 422 for uh, broadcast, it supports all of that. And it gives you that with performance that can be described as, you know, the latency at subframe, whether it's, you know, fully uncompressed or uh, compressed solutions at one gig or, or 2.5. So it gives you all of those technical benefits. It gives you um, error resiliency. So you get three different formats of um, error resiliency where you get, you, there's a spec for having completely duplicate network paths and flipping from one to the other in case one fails without any loss of content or errors. It gives you um, a level of forward error correction to coding that's built in so that you can, you can manage, you know, lost packets and so on or, or you know, missing data. And then of course you, you, it supports you know, like the standard uh, network protocols like QoS, et cetera. Um, it, it allows for you know, key uh, timing protocols like a precision timing protocol, but it's not required. So you can you get the both, best of both worlds there as well. And then you have a full, you know, the, the entire discovery management routing is all built on NMOS, which is a standard and open available API so that you know, even if you 
want to build your own control network, you can, but if you're using whatever manufacturer's control, sorry, control application, um, they use it for multiple vendors if they're all following that standard. So it's a, it's a really tremendous um, detailed spec that, that, that supports all of that. And then, you know, specific HD, uh, sorry, uh, pro AV solutions like, or requirements like HDCP, AES 128 encryption, 256 encryption for AV, the AV payloads and EDID, HDP, uh, HPD events and that sort of thing as well. All of that is supported for it. So it's really, you know, it's what allows uh, Ames to call it the I, you know, IPMX, the IP media experience, because it really is built for media. And it gives you all those technical features as well. You know, so I would say that that's a, that's a CTOs uh, would love to hear all of those things. And in the end, the CEO who's gonna refer to the CTO what he wants to hear is, okay, who can, can we consolidate some costs here somehow? That's what I want to I want to hear. Why am I running a set, you know, AV engineers and maybe a set of IT engineers who are you know running my operations? Can we consolidate them at all? And that was what really was driving the broadcast space. One set of engineers who manage, you know, all the infrastructure in the facility. It's the same set of engineers. They may have some software specialists, but the but the the infrastructure that's uh, the underlying infrastructure in the industry, both the enter enterprise infrastructure and operational broad or media infrastructures, is common. The same they get to benefit from the uh, uh, same. Pur you're purchasing the same Dell or HP servers to run your uh, to run your your software. You're buying the same Cisco switches or uh, um, Intel devices to to you know, from, so from an operational and cost analysis standpoint, it's, it, it uh, really makes a lot of sense for the, at the, for the bottom line of a lot of, uh, of these, um, of these companies. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and I think that's an important thing to emphasize because as, as you say, we're, we're not only speaking in some cases to the CTO, but also the CEO. And I think you mentioned the word experience and framing it in terms of kind of the, the improved experience, whether it's, you know, a technical perspective or just a financial perspective, as you say, consolidating costs. Uh, it's important to wrap all the benefits up in a way that people are going to understand it. Is there anything that I may have forgotten to ask or anything that you would like to emphasize or underscore before we wrap up? Well, uh, no, I mean, we're, we're very, you know, Matrox is involved uh, quite a bit now in, in trying to, 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 to contribute to this new form, this new standard called IPMX. Uh, there's a number of companies that are both from the broadcast space and the pro EV space that uh, certainly, Pro AV has a lot of interest in it, but even the broadcast space has interest in IPMX for a variety of reasons. Um, and we're, uh, you know, we're very excited to be, you know, part of this vastly uh, expanding and evolving uh, industry. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much, uh, Ron Birdie, Business Development Manager for Matrox Video, and Dan Maloney, Technical Marketing Manager for Matrox Video, for joining me on the AV Plus podcast today. I really appreciate you taking the time to inform our audience, not only about how the commercial AV industry and the broadcast industries are coming together, but also how IPMX can be a powerful uh, unifier and a powerful force across both. Um, my name is Dan Farisi. I am Editor-in-Chief of Commercial Integrator. You've been listening to AV Plus. And once again, thank you so much, Ron and Dan. Thanks, Dan. You're welcome. Thanks.